Hey, 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 it's Friday, everybody. Let's fry some fish. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Amelia Dalton, and welcome to this here electronic engineering podcast brought to you by eejournal.com called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Okay, so first, you guys, I have not been this excited about a topic on fish fry for quite some time, and that says a lot. I love my job. I'm one of those crazy people that would actually keep their jobs if they won the lottery. So, this week, we're talking about the Elephant Edge Challenge with Hackster.io co-founder Adam Benzian, and how we can all help build the world's most advanced wildlife tracker. Okay, so before we bring in Adam, let's step back a second. Why are elephants so important? Did you know that they're actually referred to as a keystone species? Because their existence is key to the success of the entire ecosystem. Without them, entire ecosystems would cease to exist, or at least look very different. The movements and dietary habits of elephants actually help control the ecosystem, while at the same time creating new habitats for other animals like zebras, antelopes, and wildebeest. And get this, when it rains, the footprints of an elephant are so large and can be so plentiful, they actually serve as water sources for other smaller animals. The brain of the elephant is especially interesting to me. Did you know that an elephant's brain weighs more than any other animal and has more complex folds than all other animals except whales and has the most developed hippocampus, a brain region responsible for emotion and spatial awareness than any other animal on planet Earth? So, since we're talking about a very vulnerable population, there are only roughly 400,000 left in the world, we should also be talking about conservation, poaching, and how we can learn more from the movements of these gentle giants. So, how can we help? Funny you ask that. Let's bring in Adam Benzion, co-founder of Hackster.io, to talk about the Elephant Edge Challenge, the Open Collar Initiative, and how we can all help save this magnificent species from extinction. Let's go. Hi, Adam. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, how's it going? Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Great. Okay, so we're talking about a new Hackster.io design challenge called Elephant Edge. This is super cool. I'm really excited to talk to you, Adam, about this in particular. So first, what are the goals of this challenge? And Adam, how did this challenge come about? Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you hosting this podcast about this challenge because it's really dear to my heart beyond anything commercial, career-wise, <laughs> otherwise that I've done. This project came about, I, I guess a lot of us have different passions in life. And I, I was always a you know, wildlife uh, animal advocate, really care about and feel personally hurt by the diminishing you know, space for animals and trophy hunting and all sorts of other things that happen in the world, and in particular with elephants, also ivory collectors and industry that really destroy the elephant population around the world, and, and particularly in Africa and some in Asia. So it was just dear to my heart. But to be quite frank, I, I stumbled upon this opportunity uh, last January. I was in Amsterdam for an event, very technical, kind of a conference called the Conference. It's about, about long range kind of radios for IoT called LoRaWAN. That was kind of like the theme of that conference. And then I ran into this organization that was a small booth and I saw this kind of 3D printed rhino horn with a tiny little whisker of an antenna kind of coming out of it. And they're called Smart Parks. And I came by to see what they're working on. And they showed me that they're an organization from the Netherlands, only two people, who are working on these incredible trackers for elephants, cheetahs, lions, and rhinos. And in the case of rhinos, they're able to embed the actual tracker in the horn of the rhino. You drill a hole, put the, the tracker in, you kind of patch it, send it, and off they go. So I was really fascinated with, the, with how progressive they are and how they use really cutting-end technology, really long-term battery life, long-range radios, to do all sorts of tracking of these uh, really precious animals. And the one thing we, we discussed, and I asked them, what else can you do with these trackers? And 
what kind of learning can you actually create out of tracking these animals' behaviors and sounds and motions and possibly even the ability to snap images. And they told me that the dream is to actually embed these kind of trackers with a ton of machine learning, possibly also as well telemetry that you can infer and, and grab from the hardware. And that's what they want to do in the future. And I told them, well, guess what? I, I work for Avnet. Hackster is part of Avnet. We're a huge community of 1.5 million developers. So that's all they do is electronics and cloud and IoT and machine learning and artificial intelligence. And what if we come up with some sort of a design challenge that will call out to the community to build out these machine learning models and telemetry dashboards based on the best hardware that we can actually fund and build it also from scratch. So long story short, months and months later, we're able to um, create a vision around this. And the vision was that Hackster, along with very generous partners like Microsoft, Western Digital, and a lot of help from companies like Vulcan, Earth Ranger, Nordic Semiconductors, Tau Glass, and Ublox, we're able to raise enough money to pay for 100% of the development and shipping of the most advanced hardware tracker built by a company called Irnas, which specializes in building wildlife trackers. We're going to ship 10 of these trackers to uh, selected parks around the world. Some of these parks include the World Wildlife Fund parks. What else we're going to do is then we're going to take all the machine learning models and telemetry dashboards that the community will build and retrofit them onto the tracker in a sense, almost like creating an app store for the tracker. So now you can actually do all sorts of magical things that you couldn't have done before. Great. Okay. So let's talk about that. If my audience wants to get started working on a design for Elephant Edge, what should they expect from the process and what kinds of products and technology will they have access to? And do they need special hardware for each step of the process? Great. That's a really good, very relevant question because a lot of these kind of projects require a lot of hardware. But for this particular project, we decided not to uh, tap into hardware, rather use the software element only. Elephants today, there are more elephants that are dying that are being born. And at the rate of extinction that we're facing today, we probably have about 10 years before the last wild African elephant will be seen in the wild natural death, trophy hunting, poaching, and also human-animal conflict when elephants come, say, to a village in, in danger of villagers' lives, and then they lose their lives in, in the process. And, and I understand clearly why humans, you know, want to attack back and fight back when a giant, you know, uh, eating machine walks into your, your village and, try, and, you know, destroys your home and endangers your life. But then you have the trophy hunters and the ivory hunters, and this could be even, you won't believe this, and when it comes to ivory hunters, it's even terrorist groups in Africa that actually fund their operations through ivory, you know, and they shoot elephants with from helicopters with anti-tank, you know, kind of, you know, weaponry. So the projects is all about how do we keep these animals safe inside of the parks that they live in and creating almost like a language between the color that they're going to be wearing to the software that we're going to be building to translate what do elephants see and feel and do to understand are they in some sort of a distress? What kind of a distress? Is a distress something more part of the natural world, which is okay, even if, if it's endangering them because it's natural? Or is it distress based on uh, some sort of a human interaction, which could be, again, you can correlate information that elephant shows signs of distress and the map shows the elephant is inside of a village. So you know that you can actually come and help and step out and, and make sure that the, the villagers don't harm the animal. So there's a lot of things that you can monitor. So the way we kind of position it is like about five kind of like levels of monitoring. One of them is poaching risk monitoring. Another one is human conflict monitoring. Another one is it's called most uh, monitoring. This is when male bull elephants are, to be honest, are in heat they actually become extremely violent, unpredictable at that point. So you can use acoustic sensors to see what they do and understand if they show any erratic, loud, and aggressive behavior. And then other elephant activity monitors like, well, are they seeking water? Are they finding water? Are they going swimming, drinking, digging for water? Understanding food sources. And the last one, which is really interesting, is communications monitoring. So for example, Elephants communicate with their feet, for example. The, you know, this is something I did not know until recently, but they do. So understanding almost like translating what do they actually say when they're communicating with their feet and how can we can then understand and decipher it 
into a human language. So what we've done is we, we are providing on the contest page, and I'll share how to get to that page, a lot of data sets. And the data sets really are repositories of the machine learning developers can actually use. So for example, all sorts of elephant voices. So we have an entire database of elephant voices and what do they each mean? Something they call the, the elephant human translator. It's also including on the site, elephant acoustics white paper, what elephants calls, also the sounds they make actually mean. So there's a user guide for that. All sorts of amazing data sets that we've got from parks in Africa and from some zoos. And we're also going to get a few more in the coming weeks. So we're going to upload them to the site. And the idea is to take all this data and building models using a tool called Edge Impulse. It's one of our partners. And with Edge Impulse, you can then create the models to say, in this model, we're tracking elephants in distress. There's all sorts of models to say, this is what the elephants are doing at any given time. And the people that track them and care for them can understand exactly what is happening to them anywhere they are under any condition. And the models that we can build are endless. So unlike hardware that you put on, a, on an elephant and you, let it, you set it loose and the elephant roams for about eight years, that's about the life of the battery, the hardware. And then you can only get information when you're near it or whatever information you can pass to the web. With this new technology, you're creating this sort of app store. You can continue and deploy more and more solutions onto the caller and then read more out of it as well. So it's like a new way of doing elephant and, and wildlife tracking, to be honest with you, in general. Add one last thing. Everything that we're going to do is going to be open sourced on the opencaller.io project. So any other conservation organization around the world can use it and go and uh, use the hardware and the software that we built. Clearly, they have to manufacture the hardware themselves, but they can get the schematics and the bill of materials and understand exactly how was it built and all the firmware. And that is, again, something that nobody has ever done. And it's really, really exciting. So let's talk specifically more about that Open Collar initiative. For my audience who may not know, what is it all about? Okay, so Open Collar, it's something that started by smart parks because they really care about the world. And they realize, while well, smart parks works maybe on very specific technologies and parks with specific things they're trying to track. With Open Collar, what they're saying is, there's a lot of people in the world that are working on really cool technologies that can help animals. So instead of keeping it on our computers and our own closed GitHub repositories, they actually open it all up. So they publish the full development and lessons they've learned from building colors on opencolor.io and also on a form called Wild Labs. And I can share all the links later. This way, people from all over the world can join these sites and improve the Open Color project and make the hardware and software accessible for everyone for free. So that is like a real game changer as well, that you just don't need to start from scratch. There are these repositories that are free for you to use and, and build from. Tell me more about one of the partners for this challenge, Smart Parks. It, what is their role in this challenge overall? And, and what are they all about as well? Well, we have a lot of technology partners. They are the ones that really inspired us to do what we're doing here. They're an organization, you know, again, like from the Netherlands, that really uh, two guys that really care about animals and really want to create services and technology to protect endangered species and conserve the environment. So they collaborate with all sorts of technology partners, big and small, anywhere from the World Wildlife Fund to a company like uh, Semtech or Microsoft or Google to build very innovative tools for parks to buy from them or to just learn from them and deploy this on animals. So they have real trackers working as we speak on lions, on cheetahs, on orangutans in Borneo. So their colors have been deployed all over the world to track and save animals. And so, you know, it's a work of love and passion. And I can tell you that they don't, they don't make a lot of money from it. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine so. Um, so Adam, Let's talk a little bit about the prizes for this challenge. Other than helping elephants, which I think is prize enough, what else could my audience win if they participate? Cool. So you're right. This is not the richest of, of contests to say, hey, and you're going to win you know, $10,000 and uh, you know, a, a trip to Bali. It's more about uh, doing good in the world. But what we're doing is we're giving 10 Apple Watches for the 10 top machine learning mo models and dashboards. And we also have designed this beautiful collectible t-shirt that we've built that these people are going to get, the winners are going to get. It's just pretty and it's really cool. And very few people in the world are going to have it. We're calling it for the love of elephants. Two really fun prizes. And you get a ton of recognition 
You're going to end up on the Microsoft blogs, uh, on the Hackster blog, Avnet, press releases, and you're going to do good in the world. This, your work, should you contribute here, will get deployed and will get used. And that is in itself magical. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Okay. So Adam, finally, when my audience wants more information about this challenge, which I know they will, where should they go for more information? Cool. So yeah, you go to the hackster.io website and then you probably will find it on the homepage. There's going to be a banner on the homepage. And if not, click on the contest tab and then you'll find it right there. So with, without giving you a long URL, you can just go to hackster.io You'll find it either on the homepage and if not on the contests uh, tab, which is the third tab from the top. Excellent. Well, Adam, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me and telling my audience all about the Elephant Edge Design Challenge. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here and I hope to see you guys all on our contest. If you guys want even more information about Smart Parks, the Open Collar Initiative, or the Elephant Edge Design Challenge, I've included a slew of links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? You should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D 1978. And if LinkedIn is more your thing, well, sure, you can follow me or us on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by yours truly. And also by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or the iTunes Store. And remember, if you want any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology, or if you just want to chat, I promise I will respond. Shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of August 28th, 2020, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.